previously on Balls. You're with me now from the sweatshop. Jack owns the sweatshop and he is an export expert in sports shoes. So we're going to be discussing all the latest technologies and all the different trends there are now. It's always big talk about sports shoes. Hey, Jack? Yeah, it's Yes, it is certainly a, a very large industry. And um, whilst there's a fair amount of hype about it, um, a lot of the hype uh, is vested in research and these guys spend huge amounts on research and development and uh, sportsmen and the general lay public benefit from this research it's a bit like formula one motor racing you don't see the benefit whilst watching it but when you go and buy your next car things that started out there like traction control are now present in your in your car today okay so all the technology is helping us perform better and prevent injury Yes, uh, there's certainly a link between the two. Um, at times it can be somewhat tenuous, but there is definitely a link between the two. All right, well, let's start at the beginning. So how important are the shoes that you wear if you're an active person and a sports person? Shoes are unfortunately a compromise. They're um, a compromise between a number of properties that are somewhat incompatible. The ideal shoe would offer you great cushioning, great support um, and be nice and flexible and super light and very durable. Unfortunately, if you want lightness, invariably you've got to uh, reduce the amount of material used as well as reduce the density of that material to reduce the weight. So durability starts taking a bit of a pounding um, and uh, the amount of support that you get from the shoe takes a pounding. So you've got to decide what's most important to you. Do you want the do you want the support or do you want the durability or do you want the weight or Yes, it's it's a balancing act. Balancing act of trying to get the most of all the different features. Yeah, best of all worlds is what we all hope for. <laughs> Seldom happens. <though. laughs> and tell me now, are there specific shoes you should wear for specific sports? It sounds like an obvious question, but you know, you do get people who just say, no, I buy general trainers and I can wear that for everything I do. Yes, cross trainer is something of a misnomer. Um, there are shoes for specific sports. Um, your, there are occasions where you can make a choice and buy a single shoe that will cover a number of activities with very little compromise involved and here I'm thinking of trail running shoes for instance which um, work fine on a hockey field in fact uh, Pity could see her when she broke the international record for the most international hockey goals scored was actually wearing a trail running shoe rather than a ah, hockey shoe there you have it sure okay uh, so some some work for for different Yes, uh, one of the ones that don't work is when you want to take your running shoe onto a tennis court. The only person that benefits from that is me when I sell you <laughs> another pair of shoes because you've put a big hole through the front of your tennis shoe. And the reason behind this is simply your tennis shoe has got a lip here, so when you drag your foot, uh, imitating that great serve of uh, Novak Federer. Djokovic, um, <laughs> you drag a big hole in your uh, running shoe over there. And, oops, I need a new pair of these. Thank <laughs> you, that'll be 1,500 Rand. And that's the, I'm getting close to that Porsche that I still don't have. <laughs> sure. And now tell me, what, what shoes suit different feet types? So if we know we've got an high arch or a low arch, or can you kind of give us the basic rundown of what shoe you should look for depending on your, your foot style, foot shape? Um, yes, I can. Uh, the general belief is the more high arch your foot is, the more rigid it is, the more cushioning you require, okay. and the lower your arch, the less cushioning you require because your foot is going to pronate. Uh, or roll inwards, um, I didn't swear at you. Um, the, it is actually not all bad news. That inward rotation of your foot uh, allows your foot to decelerate over a longer period of time. The force that you hit the ground with is amortized over that longer period. The peak force is thus reduced. Um, the bad news is that inward rotation does not occur in isolation. As the foot rotates inwards, 
the tibia rotates. And as the tibia is. rotates, the patella, which is attached to it, is going to move as well. So it may then not track evenly in the femoral groove. And it will and you get so-called runner's knee. Okay, so it's better to have low arches, obviously, in your foot, so your foot doesn't pronate and end up damaging uh, your knee. No, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, low arched feet, there are a lot of people out there, two very well-known low arched feet. Uh, Bruce Fordyce, you can play billiards on the bottom of his feet. Really? And Glenn Cunningham, uh, who was the world mile record holder, both indoors and outdoors, and silver medalist in the 1936 Olympic Games. Huh? Trivia um, for you. He, he arrived uh, when the Second World bro War broke out. He arrived at uh, Uncle Sam's recruiting post and said, Uncle Sam needs me. Here I am. They took one look at his feet and said, I'm sorry, sir, you have got flat feet. You are medically unfit. Well, it probably got him out of the army. Uh, as I say, in the days of the total onslaught, it's the only way you got out of the South African army was when your guide dog had flat feet. <laughs> but um, on the other hand, Mark Pleiches, who, like Bruce Fordyce, used to work in the sweatshop, um, and he won the uh, Rome World uh, Marathon Championships. He had pretty high arched feet. Okay. So, unfortunately, you've got high arch feet, doesn't make you a great runner. You've got flat feet, also is no guarantor. All right. So, how do you advise people to go about buying the right running shoe for them? Um, the I'm going to throw a third curve fall in here um, okay. at the risk of stepping on toes. Um, most, most folks say, well, high arch, I need lots of cushion. But... Uh, Black people um, generally have fairly straight, low-arched feet. And Annette Thompson, who's a podiatrist based down in Natal, has done a lot of research on foot shapes, South African foot shapes, and for that read mostly black foot shapes, in determining the correct lasts to make school shoes for oh. predominantly black kids in this country. Okay. Um, so... Unfortunately, no easy answer. Your best bet is actually to go to a store such as the Sweatshop or other specialist store where there's trained staff who can look at your feet, put you in a pair of shoes, watch you walk or run in them, and help you determine how much medial support you need and how much plain cushion you need. Depending on your stride, depending on your motion, depending on your foot shape. Yes, and whether you're... Quibus Visser in his current form, or me in my current form, <laughs> or like you, Haley, um, who if a strong wind blows along, uh, you're in trouble. You can come again. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, I was angling. <laughs> so it is basically uh, knowing that you can get shoes that are specifically suited to your feet and it's about going to the right place to get them. That's why I contacted you to come on the shows because I was so impressed by the service that you get at the sweatshop in really looking at what's going to be the safest shoe for you and what's going to cause you, you know, the, or going to give you the most comfort. Yes, that's what we try to do. We try to reduce uh, the potential of you getting injured. Uh, the longer you stay uninjured, the better it is for our business. Um, it's a very short-term thing getting you in for a second pair of shoes because if you do, in fact, come back to us, uh, it's probably the last time. So we would prefer to sell you a pair of shoes and you tell your mates they were great. Sure, sure. And just let's touch on this barefoot running trend that a lot of people have, have spoken about. Um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on reverting back to barefoot running? Well, barefoot Barefoot running in itself, I believe, is actually probably pretty healthy for you. There's a small problem, though. We've, uh, we've built tarred roads or in the last 200 years, um, and we haven't evolved quite as fast as we've laid down the tarmac. <laughs> so on a unpaved surface, running with barefoot or minimalist-type shoes, uh, that's great. If you can get onto your local golf course and do fartlek, and that's... Not swearing, that is Swedish for speed play. It's a wonderful form of training and doing it barefoot will probably strengthen the intrinsic muscles in your feet. And Nike, uh, who are, own a large proportion of that barefoot market with their range of free shoes, 
which as you can see are very, very flexible. It's cut to allow um, your foot to act as normally as possible. Um, but that works on a on an untarred surface. Well, on a this natural. This, uh, this because as you can see, there's actually a reasonable amount of foam material here is not too bad on tarmac. Okay. Um, your total minimalist shoe, your your Vibram five fingered kind of shoe, which freaked me out a little bit. Um, on an uh, on a paved surface, I think you would find very hard, unless you were one of those people with these hyper mobile feet or a four-foot striker where um, your foot would be absorbing more more force than is typical of the average, um, you with a fairly high arch foot are going to struggle somewhat on this. And this whole thing about running on your forefoot is as nature intended and ensures that you're going to be less injury prone is possibly not as cast in stone as we believed until fairly recently. The US Army has just done a research project. Great place to do it because uh, the corporal or the sergeant or whoever can ensure that you do just what he says. <laughs> and there are easy ways to monitor these people. And they had 342 people in this test, which is a relatively large sampling. Um, and they actually found that in terms of days off because of injury, uh, people um, who were heel strikers spent less days off than people that were midfoot and forefoot strikers. So this goes quite contrary to Lieberman's research, uh, who's extensively quoted in um, McDougall's book, Born to Run. Okay. Um, that says you should put your weight on yeah, your Yeah, that you should first. run on your forefoot. Um, but or, there's a lot of grey out there and there's not that much black and white when it comes to this kind of research. Okay, but it's interesting just to hear that those five-toe shoes, I mean, I see people running in races with them all the time, but you would say that's best on a on an untarred surface, maybe for trail running or golf course running. Uh, to me, yes, that would be a better place for it. Um, bear in mind that although this barefoot running has attracted a lot of publicity both for and against um, it has been described as the church by an Australian um, <laughs> uh, professor at La Trobe University when referring disparagingly to adherence of barefoot running um, it is quite evangelical in places um, but the whole market is only about six percent of the entire um footwear mar so uh, market so barefoot running shoes only take up about six percent of the whole market yes and nike with the free uh, account for 60 percent of that sure. and incidentally there are uh just recently there was an article in runner's world uh usa uh quoting sales figures for the first three months of this year that is suggestive that the, that the bubble has burst and that the market is now in decline. They were talking about a double-digit decline in that market. But one, one swallow does not a summer make. We'll have to <laughs> wait and see what happens over a longer period. Bear in mind the first three months is the Northern Hemisphere winter when who you does can't. want to run barefoot <laughs> sure. in that kind of weather? Sure. Very knowledgeable. We've got Jack here, the owner of the sweatshop in studio, telling us about all the different trends and what you need to look for when buying a sports shoe. We're running out of time, Jack. Maybe you can just, is there anything else you want to show us? You've got a few shoes in front of us. Will was telling us you've got the shoe that was the Comrades winner this year. Um... I unfortunately don't have that shoe oh. with me. Um, uh, I do is have the shoe. Is it not the Nike free? Is it um, not the Nike free? Uh, I don't know. It was a Nike uh, shoe. It was a fly knit shoe. Okay. Very interesting technology. It's knitted very much like a sock uh, as opposed to a, a cut upper that is then bonded to the midsole. Uh, I do have the ladies winners shoe here. And that was um, a Adidas Adios Energy Boost shoe. Uh, Energy Boost is a new uh, boost is a new midsole material that uh, Hush Laboratories have developed uh, on Adidas's behalf. 
of which they're making huge claims about its ability to bounce back hence give you more boost your energy performance plus um they say it's a, going to be a lot more durable than eva it's a tpu which is a closed cell foam as opposed to an open cell foam <laughs> which is what eva is all the technology uh, and products that go into these shoes i think the best thing you can do is go over to the sweatshop you've got one in down Kelt, and where's your other branch we've got in cape town in claremont and also in south downs pretoria and in four ways Okay, so four ways in Dunkelt in Joburg and Claremont in uh, Cape Town and also in South Downs in Pretoria. Go through to the sweatshop and let the experts there look at your foot, look at your stride and suggest something that's best for you. But you saw there the Comrades female winning shoe. It's the Adi Adidas Energy Boost. Uh, adios. 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 There you have it. Well, thanks, Jack, for coming into studio. Very knowledgeable. We hope to bring you in again soon to chat a little bit more about this. You certainly have the knowledge and Expertise, and thanks for being on Balls Radio. Thank you. The Haley O Show. Every Friday, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Only on balls.co.za.